blade and quill. Hello and welcome. In this new series of videos, I will be answering specific questions to help you better understand the Krita's interface and tools. If you are using the default workspace, you will find the toolbox on the left side of your screen. There are eight selection tools and they are located at the bottom of the toolbox. The Krita's interface can be manipulated and rearranged to your needs. You can personalize uh, your workspace by moving dockers. Dockers are floating sub-windows. The toolbox is a sub-window, as well as the advanced color selector, the layers, and the brush presets. To pop, a docker out of its original place, click the button located on the upper right of each box panel. Please note that the toolbox does not have a pop-out button. To move it, you will need to grab its upper edge, so let's do that. I want to move a toolbox to the top of a canvas. When an area of the interface is ready to accept a floating panel, it highlights. The area is highlighted, so therefore I can drop and dock the sub-window. You can resize your panel by dragging the white dots up or down. Now let's move the Tool Options panel. Click, grab the floating panel and drag it to the left side of the screen, right underneath the toolbox. When the area of interest is highlighted, drop the panel and dock it. Resize it just like we did earlier with the toolbox. To save your workspace, go to the upper right of your screen and click on the Choose Workspace icon. Name it, for example, you could name it My Favorite. And now click Save. Each tool holds its own set of actions and they are located in the Tool Options Docker. But before, that sub-window was hiding behind the color wheel. Now that the actions are located right beneath the toolbox, we have a direct access to them. Look at what happens in the Tool Options window as I click on some tools. They change. As I mentioned earlier, we have eight selection tools. The rectangular selection tool, the elliptical selection tool, the polygonal selection tool, the outline selection tool, the similar color selection tool, the contiguous selection tool, the Bezier curve selection tool, and finally the magnetic selection tool. Most of the selection tools will have the same basic actions. For instance, what you can do with a rectangular selection tool, you can do as well with the elliptical tool. Just by dragging your stylus or mouse on the canvas, you will be able to create shapes of all sizes. However, if you hold the shift key while dragging, you will create perfectly symmetrical shapes. For instance, you will create a perfect square or a perfect circle.
All eight selections without exceptions are used for the following. You can select an area and hit delete on your keyboard. Here we are going to select the eyes and move them a little higher. We are going to do so using the move tool. When a selection is active, you can only paint inside it. No pigments will go outside of your selected area. Select an area within a colored object and change its hue or maybe its saturation or lightness. Using the lasso tool, Select the eyes. To cut and move the eyes to another layer, do Ctrl Shift plus J. The eyes are now on the layer above. Here we are going to do the same thing, but this time we are going to copy what we have selected with the lasso tool. To copy them to another layer, do Ctrl Alt plus J. Now the heart are on the layer above. Use the move tool to move them and to rotate use the transform tool. To invert your selection, just go to Select and scroll down to Invert Selection. You can also use the shortcut Ctrl plus Shift plus I. The first one is using the shortcut Ctrl plus Shift plus A. You can also right click on your selection and scroll until you see deselect. You can finally go to the select tab and scroll down to deselect. To display your selection, go to the lower left side of your screen. When you click on this icon after you have selected an area, the selected area will be clear. The pink shows what is not selected. It is actually extremely useful to select straight lines especially if you are working on uh, architectural drawings. Here we are going to select the window. Click once at one corner to start the selection. Then click at every corner until you reach back your starting point. If you are using a stylus and not your mouse, tap rather than clicking. You can also create your own geometric shapes and fill them with colors. To fill your selections with the foreground color, use the shortcut Shift plus Backspace. To fill your selections with a background color, use the shortcut Ctrl plus Backspace. Make sure to choose a pattern before you start. To fill your selection with a pattern, go to the Edit tab, scroll down, 
to fill with pattern. Just like the polygonal tool, you need to click once to start the selection. Now go to the place where you want the curve to end. Click and leave your finger on the button of your mouse, the left button. Now drag the mouse until you create the curve you want. When you are satisfied, let go your finger. This tool allows you to make freeform selections, but unlike the polygonal selection tool or the outline selection tool, it will try to act like a magnet and snap to the lines you created or any sharp contrasts in your image. If you are familiar with Photoshop, the outline selection tool is known as the lasso tool. Think of it as a freehand brush. You can draw any type of shapes or select any intricate shapes on your drawing or painting. It is very precise and very useful when trying to select something extremely small. I use it a lot when I add shadows or highlights to particular places in my drawings. Here again, if you are familiar with Photoshop, the contiguous selection tool is known as the magic wand. It is widely used to select large areas. The similar color tool allows you to pick up a specific color within a painted layer. You can then uh, delete it if you want, or maybe you can copy or move it to another layer. Now, please uh, note that if the colors are too close to each other, it may not pick the colors and separate them. So just be aware of that. Actions allow you to modify your selections. We have five sets of actions, replace, intersect, add, subtract, and the symmetric difference. Replace is your default setting. Every time you make a selection, it is replaced by the new one you make. The intersect actions allows you to catch the overlapping section of two selections overlapping each other. If you need to select more than one area in your painting or your drawing, you will click on the action Add. You can make as many selections as you want. You can also do so by holding the shift key. You can also use the add button or hold the shift key if you want to grow or change the shape of an existing selection. If you need to remove parts of a selection, click on the subtract action button or hold the alt key. If you are making selections on the top of each other but you do not want them to overlap, you will use the symmetric difference.
just as you could feel a selection with a color or a pattern, you can stroke the outlines of your selection. Make a selection, right click, scroll down to transform. Now scroll down to stroke selection. You have a choice for type, line, width and fill. You can choose between having a solid line or a current brush. For the line, you can choose between the foreground color, the background color or a custom color. Now if you have selected the solid line, you can change the width and the fill. Same thing for the fill, you can choose between no fill, line color, background color, custom color or foreground color. If you do a custom color, you will click on the little window filled with a color on the side. A new window will appear and you will choose the colors you need and then click OK. Now please note that if you select current brush, you cannot make changes in the area called width and fill. It will use the brush that you have currently selected when you were painting. Alright, I believe I covered the major points uh, for today's course. The next tutorial will be all about the transform tool and its uh, actions. I hope you will get to try and test uh, all the tools and the shortcuts uh, I covered today. The more you try, uh, the more comfortable you will get at using the interface. I will see you next week and until then, have a great day. Bye.